now we've got Gerald Cosgrove, Agri Ag Research Palmerston North on grass persistence. Thanks. Thank you, Alistair. Uh, good morning. This spot's quite bright. Um, pasture persistence. At a conference in 2018, um, there was a presentation on this study uh, by Tom Maxwell, Lincoln University. We have two sites, sheep grazing at Lincoln and cattle grazing in Waikato, and it's the Waikato experiment that I'm going to be talking about this morning. Um, the, oh yeah. um, the primary question in this study is, is to what extent is persistence affected by the establishment year conditions of pasture experiences, the first 12 months after sowing, and Following that, over the life of the pasture, the age at which various episodic stresses um, occur on that pasture, it's something that we have no, the time of, we have no control over. Um, the major activity in the study is the repeated annual sowings to remove the confounding between age and year, and I'm going to show a diagram to explain that a little bit more. Um, within each sowing year, there is an experimental structure uh, we've got eight perennial ryegrass cultivars, differing in age category. It's a decade of release to the market, um, flowering date and ploidy, and two other species as example plants where no one, have no one good persistence characteristics, um, tall fescue and coxfoot. Measurements focus largely on dry matter production, botanical composition and pasture structure, and we're aiming to do that over... 10 years. Um, so the design, you can see those shade on the concentrate on the left hand figure. Um, you can see five columns shaded there. Uh, there's a red circle around three of those. The sowing year for three successive sowings. And that's what I'm going to focus on this paper in this paper. But the columns below those, you can see those one to ten years, which we hope to continue the monitoring of to really understand the life of each, each of those pastures and what are the contributing effects of those different sowing years. Um, I mentioned the structure within a sowing year, um, species and cultivars, eight ryegrasses and two other species. Um, the ones in black font connect this study to other work that was set up um, several years ago on the genetic gain work in ryegrasses, a study that's led by David Chapman and others. And so we, we thought it was important to connect what he is doing with what we're doing in this study so that the data is sort of um, comparable. And then we've got four other cultivars in there, uh, two, of, two of ryegrass, Rua Nui, very old cultivar, Sampson, and there's, as I said, Coxford and Tall Fescue. Just in terms of results, I'm going to do that in a qualitative rather than a quantitative way, um, given the short presentation time. Um, there were significant, statistically significant effects due to cultivar, year of sowing, and their interaction for all the pasture variables we measure. Getting to the nub of the experiment and the experimental design, those two bullet points below that, the one in the middle, very different pasture botanical compositions and densities set up in the three sowing years. Those three years, successive years I showed that had a red um, oval around them. That's really the nub of what we want to understand. If you sow a pasture, what is the contributing effect of the conditions that that pasture has in its first 12 months of life? How they endure over time and how they affect the pasture's resilience pasture's resilience to those episodic stresses. And finally, year-to-year -year differences in establishment may affect the future resilience of these pastures to biotic and abiotic stresses, really repeating just what I'd, I'd said. Okay, Tom, um, just want to acknowledge our funders. Um, Long-term studies are, are difficult to sustain. Um, they do cost money. Fortunately, we have, currently have funding from the Ag Research Strategic Science and Investment Fund. Um, Dairy NZ put money into this exper 
experiment um, at the early days to get it off the ground. And the Lincoln site received funding from the Ellert Trust. Um, I'd like to thank Agricom, Arenberg Agri Seeds, and Grasslands Technology for supplying us with high spec seed each year. And as I mentioned, there's a sister site at, at Lincoln. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.